Hello friends, how are you? I'm Ari Therger and today I'm going to talk about the snakes St. Patrick drove out of Ireland. Who exactly were these snakes and how they are connected to druids? This is a video quite different from the usual subjects of this channel. It was requested by one of my patrons, Miss Amanda Rake. Thank you so much, madam. I have asked my patrons if they want to make video requests, that such requests should always be concerning Scandinavian studies. But I've opened an exception this time for two reasons. I like the patron in question, <laughs> and as you know, I always upload a video every Wednesday, and normally a month has four Wednesdays, so four videos. But occasionally, as it so happens this month, there are five Wednesdays. So when that happens, uh, it's like an extra video, and I would like to dedicate that extra Wednesday for videos concerning other pagan subjects not Scandinavian related. And I thought uh, this patron's request was a good excuse to start doing that. So no more delay, let's get started. As you know, St. Patrick, or his Latin name Patricius, was a 5th century Romano-British Christian missionary sent to Ireland to spread Christianity. Nowadays, St. Patrick's Day is a holiday celebrating Ireland's favorite patron saint. It's a big event in Ireland. St. Patrick, supposedly, was responsible for the Christianization of Ireland, bringing the Christian faith to the Irish, and at the same time he, he drove out the snakes. A very pejorative term, as in driving away the filth and evil of the land. But what truly happened with the Christianization of Ireland is exactly what happened and continued to happen to the rest of Europe, a religion that brought cultural genocide. But today we are not here to talk about St. Patrick and his wonderful and fantastical deeds. We are here to talk about the snakes he drove out of Ireland. Who exactly were these people? With the end of the last glacial period, the ice melted. And it was possible for humans to inhabit the island, Ireland. In archaeology, we start to see early settlements around 11,000 years ago. Ireland has always been an island separated from the rest of the British Isles. Even though in prehistoric times the sea level was lower than today, Ireland was still an island cut off from the rest of the islands and continental Europe. Up until the late Neolithic, the Ireland natives were practically the same, until Western Southern Europe enters in the Bronze Age. More or less 2500 years before the Common Era, Ireland is invaded by new people, generally known as the Bell Beaker people. Now, the Bell Beaker culture originated where nowadays central Portugal is, and from there, this culture spread to the rest of Europe. Mind that we are talking about the Bell Beaker culture and not the corded ware of the Yamnaya culture from the east. So, Ireland was invaded by the Western Atlantic European peoples, coming from the south northwards. The natives of Ireland were still pretty much uh, in the Neolithic while the Western Atlantic peoples were very much into the Bronze Age. The advances in technology and weaponry almost completely wiped out the natives of Ireland. Most natives of Ireland were replaced by Western Atlantic peoples. Recent genetic research shows that there are strong similarities between the Y chromosome haplotypes from the males of northern western Spain and of Portugal with the Irish men who often appear with Gaelic surnames. The frequency of 
the Y-DNA haplogroup R1b, which is the most common haplogroup in the continent of Europe, is in fact the highest in the populations of the Atlantic Europe and also due to the mass European immigrations, it is also very common in North America, South America and Australia. In terms of DNA, more than 70% of modern Irish share the same DNA as the people of northern Portugal and the people from northwestern Spain, Galicia. So, these became the new natives of Ireland, the peoples we often call Celts. Furthermore, the traditional Irish legends tell us that it was from the Iberian Peninsula that the Gaels, the speakers of Gaelic languages, invaded and conquered Ireland. The Book of Invasions tells us that the peoples of Iberia invaded Ireland. And it tells us of the, the origins of the Irish and the origins of the Irish monarchy, which starts precisely with the Balbeaker invaders. And it's no coincidence northern Portugal and northern western Spain have Irish legends and southern Ireland has Iberian legends. Of heroes going to and fro between these geographical realities. And the Book of Lunsta uh, confirms such events with accounts, for instance, of, of an Irish hero who came from northern uh, Iberia, a warrior named Golmach, uh, who later on offered his services to the king of Scythia. Well, it doesn't matter. What is important to retain is that the Irish legends are confirmed by the DNA analysis I've spoken about previously. The Irish during the Bronze Age were invaders of Western Atlantic Europe, from the western parts of the Iberian Peninsula. And it was these people, most of them, that later on during the 5th century St. Patrick encountered and drove out of Ireland, supposedly. I've just summarized a lot the origins of the Irish. Um, this is exactly where I wanted to get. The Northern Iberians settled in Ireland and these were the true snakes. Now, at this point, we already know who the Irish were. At least the Irish, some of the Irish, St. Patrick came in contact with. The peoples that had come from what is nowadays Northern Portugal and Northwestern Spain. We know St. Patrick drove out the snakes from Ireland. But why this term? Why snakes? We are not only in the presence of an obvious Christian metaphor of labeling pagans as snakes or serpents. In the Christian mythology of the Middle Ages, the serpent or the dragon became a symbol of evil, destruction, godlessness, and many Christian saints are depicted as warriors fighting and defeating serpents. The serpent was a common totemic symbol among European pagans. We have myths of serpents and dragons all over pre-Christian Europe, uh, from west to east, from north to south, Jormungandr, Ishab, Fafnir, hundreds of thousands of snake engravings on stone from the Bronze Age up until the Middle Ages, serpent goddesses like Athena and her serpent guardian of the Acropolis, Minoan snake goddess figurines, etc. The figure of the serpent for pagans was a symbol of protection. It symbolized life on earth and its invisible energy. The serpent that bites its own tail, which symbolizes the eternity of the spiritual world and the eternity of the physical reality, coming together as one. In many ancient philosophies, the serpent was compared to the world, because the earth, just like the serpent, sheds away its skin periodically, resurging each cycle in a rejuvenated state. And due to its 
cyclic regeneration, the serpent also represents the multiplicity of existences, reincarnation, that is the eternity of life. This is one of the great reasons why many deities are represented as serpents or somehow connected to serpents or snakes or dragons. Especially deities related to the earth or to the cycle of nature, birth, life, death and rebirth. The serpent becomes the animal that represents the divine presence in physical state. Not to mention the obvious symbology of the serpent with cosmic wisdom. So, clearly, to the pagans, the serpent was a strong magical religious symbol and obviously Christianity comes to destroy that serpent, to hunt it down and kill the serpent or the snake. Because it's the representation of cultural genocide, uh, a religion coming to destroy the very essence of other religions. All over Europe, pre-Christian and even pre-Roman Empire peoples, one way or another, venerated the symbol of the serpent or the snake or the dragon. But there was one particular people, one particular culture, who was specially devoted to serpents and were great worshippers of serpents. And one of their most important deities was a serpent god. These people were the same who invaded Ireland during the Bronze Age and settled there, becoming the Irish, or most of the Irish, St. Patrick came in contact with. These people were the ones that inhabited northern Portugal. The Office. We will never know how the pre-Roman peoples of northern Portugal called themselves, but the Greeks called them Office, which means serpent. And one of their most important gods was the serpent of wisdom, and their territory was called by the Greeks as Ophiusa, which is nowadays Portugal, mostly northern Portugal and also Galicia. Ophiusa means land of serpents. The Office lived in the mountains of northern Portugal. They also lived side by side with the Sife, from the Germanic chess region from the Ulstad culture, who settled in these territories of Iberia. And because of the proximity with the culture of the Office, the Sife also began to venerate snakes. The Office venerated the serpent and the dragon, which was no more than a winged heavenly serpent. On top of all of this, along with these people, there were also the dragani or dragano, the people of the dragons. Mind that these are all either Greek or Latin names of these people. We do not know their original names. According to the Roman accounts, many people had to flee from northern Portugal because of an invasion of serpents, which is a metaphor for the serpent worshippers, the office, Sithe and Dagano. This invasion of serpents occurred in Ireland as well. As I've said previously, these Western Iberians from the Atlantic invaded Ireland during the Bronze Age and conquered the island and remained there. Now, the Romans were never able to invade Ireland. Following the Claudian invasions of 49 of the Common Era, the Romans were able to conquer most of present-day England, but had a lot of trouble invading what is now Wales and Scotland, which were the jumping points to invade Ireland. Along the centuries of Roman presence in Britannia, there were many problems with the Pictish uh, insurrections of Scotland. Uh, there was also mutiny among the Roman army. So there was never a proper moment or proper conditions to invade Ireland. So Ireland pretty much remained the same. And uh, the worshippers of serpents of the Western Iberian Peninsula continued worshipping serpents in Ireland 
until the 5th century with the coming of Saint Patrick. But before we jump to the serpents Saint Patrick drove out of Ireland, let me just tell you uh, one thing. Ireland was not conquered by the Romans, but there is plenty of evidences of Roman trading links with Ireland. There is also, obviously, archaeological evidences of Roman contact with the Irish, mostly of Roman coins and artifacts, and also the outfits of Irish nobles changed, adopting the tunics preferred by the Romans. But there wasn't the total Romanization of Ireland, so to speak, which means there wasn't a cultural genocide yet, and the Irish kept their old traditions, their ancestral serpent worship from their northern western Iberian ancestors. After everything I have said, by now you know exactly who St. Patrick was about to encounter in Ireland, in his mission to Christianize the island the serpent worshippers, some of them, the descendants. Driving out the snakes of Ireland wasn't just metaphorically speaking. Well, in a way, yes, it was obviously, but not as in the general Christian pejorative term for pagans and paganism in general, but also driving out of Ireland the serpent worshippers and the ancestral cult of the serpent, which, as you know, as, and as I have said before, the serpent worship was associated with the natural cycles of life, with rebirth, protection, and wisdom, among other things. So, quite obviously, Saint Patrick never banished actual snakes. Snakes is a metaphor for the serpent of paganism. But it so happens that these pagans, some of them, were serpent worshippers, or at least most likely kept the ancestral serpent worship since the Bronze Age, the Irish remained pretty much Irish and not Romanized. But the thing with Saint Patrick Christianizing Ireland wasn't quite like that. There were Christian missionaries before him and after him. The Christianization of Ireland took a couple of centuries, not to mention that some Irish colonized Wales and came in contact with Christianity, as well as the trading activities they had with the Romans of Southern Britain, I have mentioned previously. Christianity wasn't a new religious idea solely brought by St. Patrick, and that's it. Under his miracles, the entire island was Christianized. Not quite. The Irish already knew about Christianity, Christianity, and in fact, it was the Irish that brought these religious ideas into Ireland. This is pretty much what happened in Scandinavia during the Viking Age. Christianity wasn't introduced in Scandinavia by Christian missionaries. Christianity was introduced in Scandinavia by the Vikings, by those who came in contact with continental Europe and brought those religious ideas with them. And many Scandinavians adopted Christianity and Christ as yet another god of their pantheon. Some Scandinavians kept being pagan while others became Christians, and many more were both at once. Christianity only became a problem in Scandinavia when kings wanted a Christian-style monarchy and forced the religion upon their subjects. That's what happened to Ireland. It was the nobility who later on forced Christianity to the remaining pagans. It wasn't St. Patrick that drove out the serpents of Ireland. It was the Irish nobility who forced it upon themselves, upon the remaining pagans, upon the descendants of the serpent worshippers. Many people believe that the snakes St. Patrick drove out of Ireland were the Druids, 
because the druids had serpent tattoos, etc. It might be that indeed these Irish pagans had serpent tattoos due to the connection to the ancestral serpent worship of the Bronze Age of Western Iberia introduced in Ireland. But St. Patrick didn't drove out the druids and they are not the serpents. Irish nobility forcing Christianization upon the people was what drove the pagans away, what drove the ancestral pagan cults. Snakes, as a metaphor for druids, is a relatively new invention. The earliest accounts of St. Patrick's miracles are from the 7th century, and there is no mention of snakes being driven out from Ireland. This only appears in the 11th century accounts, in new reconstructions the church created to reinforce its power and the power of miracles performed by saints, to give power to the figure of a single man who performed outstanding deeds just with the power of his faith. So, originally, St. Patrick didn't banish any snake or penny. He just helped in the process of spreading Christianization. The Irish were well aware of Christianity before St. Patrick, as I've said before. St. Patrick's presence in Ireland wasn't that big of a deal, if it occurred at all. Accounts of Druids strongly opposing St. Patrick and a great reluctance from the Irish in accepting Christianity and the miracles of St. Patrick and whatnot are inventions created long after his death, creating biblical parallels for political purposes. The church was never about faith and religion, it was about politics, and many fantastical stories were created to aggrandize the power of the church, to enhance the admiration and reverence people had for this political institution hiding behind faith and religion. In fact, paganism thrived in Ireland for generations after St. Patrick died. Christianization was a process that took several centuries in Ireland. But we can say that the consolidation of the Christianization of the culture of Ireland was final during the 14th century. That's the moment, more or less, Ireland finally had a cultural genocide and the old ways put aside. So yes, in a way, the snakes were driven out of Ireland, but it took several centuries. And these snakes were the ancient pagan people, worshippers of serpents. Not all of them, obviously, but it's a very interesting cultural past not many people are aware of, precisely due to Christianization and forgetting cultural heritage. That's the only possible connection between the Irish, serpent worship, and Druids. It's an ancestral Western Iberian cult brought to Ireland during the Early Bronze Age. By the time the church accounts started speaking of snakes and Druids, Irish paganism was already a thing of the past, and Irish Christianity was already the dominant religious force on the island. So, in conclusion, St. Patrick didn't do much. He didn't create a pagan genocide and he didn't have any problems with Druids. These are post-14th century inventions of the church. But this doesn't take away the fact that, indeed, paganism died out in Ireland and the ancient pagan serpent cult ended. But it took several centuries and St. Patrick wasn't the great miracle man behind the process of Christianization of Ireland. He was just another missionary like many others before and after him. But indeed Ireland was filled with snakes, filled with people 
who were the descendants of those who worshipped the serpents, the Ophis, the Western Iberian people of the serpents, from Ophiusa, the land of serpents. A pagan past indeed forgotten due to Christianization, which is a religion that provoked cultural genocide all across Europe and beyond. Right, my good friends, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video, and as always, bye for real.